ain't no half step in Marcus J. Thank you so much for staying with us. We had a, a little spirited what the hell there, but I appreciate everybody that's still listening to us. Be down with us tonight, 804-402-2893. SY. I just wanted to say thank you to Ben. Ben, I did read the letter that you posted and definitely appalled by this letter and it just kind of goes back to one of the discussions we had earlier right um you know it was a hate letter to a woman with a child with autism but you can definitely check it out on the site it is there thanks ben it's on the legacy internet radio fan page so those folks that are listening to us on your computers or even on your smartphones Take a look at the Ain't No High Step, excuse me, take a look at the Legacy Internet Radio fan page uh, for the article that Ben shout out, shouted out to us. Uh, we can uh, have you guys take a read of that. And apparently, it's, I didn't have an opportunity, Ben, to read it myself. That's why I just did. And, you know, her body language and her mood is shot. So, apparently, it must be pretty damn crazy. So, uh, but we'll take a look at it. Ain't No High Step with Marcus J. It's time for the Diva Diaries. And we got the dating pool diva getting ready to lead us in that segment. I always like to play her little song when, when we get her and she can't hear it but y'all hey, y'all can, y'all can hear it but she can't hear it what you got girl? i can't hear it but i know it's playing it's, it's playing Diva. <laughs> it's playing what you got all right i got um my dating pool blog book with me and one of the um topics that we discussed this saturday at the love revolution um we had an awesome time by the way um we talked about this particular topic i'm gonna read it verbatim what would you do if you were dating a special someone for three years. He or she is everything you have been looking for. And you find out after mutual testing that he or she has been diagnosed with HIV or herpes. What if you were engaged to be married? So I'm going to first ask, let's see, Mr. Carlton Banks, his take on this. What would you do in this situation? How long have we been dating again? Three years. Three years. <sighs> you know, it's, it's, it's something like that. We can be friends. I'm just saying. I I, I, I can be friends. I, I've had a friend who was diabetic. I can deal with it's certain things. I can't. I, that's lifelong. That kills. That can hurt and kill me. You are engaged to be married, and you just want to become friends because they're sick. Now, this is something I cleared up at the forum. We're assuming that they didn't cheat on you. They just had a dormant situation or a situation where they didn't know they had HIV or herpes, and it came up. They were tested, and it came up. So it's not like they cheated on you. They're okay. still a good person. Right. But, you know, they have this ailment. I <laughs> That HIV thing is, is a killer. You can live with herpes. That HIV is you limiting my lifespan. You limiting first with I I I like kids. I want to have kids, and you know you bring in a kid with the possibility of having HIV or being born with HIV. Um, I know there are drugs that are supposed to prevent that, but then the aspect of herpes as well. You know that's I had. To, I had to sit back and think, really. I really and truly would have to sit back and think because I would be like, we can be friends. Honestly, I, that's that's a lot of what I would be like, we can be friends. I, 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 I don't know what else to say. I All really right, don't. I, I mean, to... I've, I've had a girlfriend that was diabetic. You know, I can deal with that. I knew, I knew that when I got into the situation. That's something I want you to look out. at this. Okay. I want you to look at this. I definitely understand where you're going. I understand where you're coming from, blah, blah, blah. Now, you're already in this big time. You've been in that pool so many times, Mm -hmm. okay? So whether your friends are not at this point, let's say, Sir Carlton, you are affected by A or B. That came up at the forum as well. Let's say you are affected by A or B. If I'm infected, then hey, we good to go. We you we, two might as well love each other for a freaking life. If we if we together are infected, then we love hey and, clink clank. And both of these are life threatening. Yeah, both of these. Okay, they cause serious harm, and you can live with both of them until you die. You might as well hang in the game, get married. If I have, <laughs> if I have it too, clink clank. 
if I don't have it, then you hit friends. the deck. We can be friends. But now wait a minute. On on HIV, doesn't this take a couple of years to show up? Dep- yeah, depending yeah. on the person yeah. and the yeah. immune So system. now check this out. You you hit you hit the bricks. You kick and run, <laughs> right? <laughs> No, I ain't saying I'm running. I said we could be friends. Ah, you gone. I ain't gone. You gone. We could be friends. You gone, right? Mm-mm. And so now, at this point, what do you have? Like a new relationship, Mm-mm. and you're gonna start this all cycle all over again. All I'm getting tested 24 days a week, eight, eight days. Okay, an which hour. was which was why I asked. Doesn't this take a while to show up? It depends. Well, I mean, and they the have testing, testing that. and the testing it only takes three months, but you can have it and feel normal and not test yourself. You know, for years you could have it. So it depends my, on if you get tested. My, my understanding is you will find out, you can find out within 90 days of infection. After that 90 days, if you got it, the, the test will show. It will show that you have it. Yeah. And you can live forever without ever getting sick. Or you, can get, you, or you can get sick pretty quickly. It just depends. Yeah. It, it depends. And then here's the other thing that people don't know and don't consider is that there are different strains of HIV. There are some that are more severe than others. And so if you get a less severe strain, then Those you may, may, be not, the you may not get sick. You may not, you know, you still got HIV, but you might not get sick. I, I'll get in on this one. I'll read the comments that we got here. Brandy Whoa. says that it depends on if they knew first or not regarding this conversation. Plus HIV and herpes are two different types of diseases. HIV can kill H, uh, herpes you can, can live with. Uh, if they knew and didn't tell you, then it's over. If they didn't know, then we'll have to work through it together. Uh, ben is still listening and agrees with Brandy. Definitely a different ball game if they knew getting into it and not saying anything, yeah. hoping to help medicine or miracle keep keep them from spreading. Um, I yeah. usually try to be the voice of reason here, but I, 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 I 100% agree with Carlton on, on, on this one. 100% agree with him. It's one of them situations where, depending on a lot of factors, I mean, there's no straight answer here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if we assume that we're in a prime marrying age range, prime child rearing age range, mm-hmm. you know, early mid 20s, early 30s, or whatever. And I find out this information and I find out, you know, that I'm uh, 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 in the free and clear range, then that is probably that, that that's range. absolutely <laughs> a situation where I'm out. Yeah. OK, have we, I'm, I'm out I'm are we, because I can't have kids with somebody that's got HIV. You can't have kids, but let's say you already have your kids and you meet this person. You're in love. You're engaged to be married. And your you heart, use protection. Your heart's just gonna break. That's all there is. It really. Is. I mean, you it's can sit there. Break. You can sit there and try to sway yeah. me all you it's want. But this break. one right here, there ain't gonna be no swaying of me on this one. If I find out that you got it, and I ain't got it, yeah. I'm out. Bye. Is that real love, though? Is that? Are we gonna be friends? I've seen people break up for a whole lot less. So let's not play that real. game. I done seen people break up for stuff that ain't got no life or death implications to it. I, I didn't I, I I saw you winking at the, the girl at the mall. Now let's argue so about fun. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or you, you, yeah. you blew the rent money on, on you know on, on on Call of Duty. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean I'm being silly to make a point, yeah. but we have all seen relationships end over things that do not have life of you know, altering, you know, implications. Now herpes on the other hand, you know, ain't nobody dying because of that. It's just an inconvenience more than anything else. Yep. You know, so and it might lead to other stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, what's his name? And what was the guy's name? Uh, he's talking about the dude who went down on the girl. Got cancer, the cancer or whatever. Yeah, he's talking about Michael Douglas. I, he I never heard. I, I, I have never in my life he and I ever heard case. of herpes being anything other than a lifelong inconvenience. I've never heard of it being the gateway Killing to other him. diseases mm-hmm. and nothing like that. But, you know, then again, you know, it is what it is. But, I mean, for me, this is about as simple a question you've ever asked. If I find out that I got it, it's going to take me a long time to get over the fact that you just basically, you know, gave me a gun with one bullet in it. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a hard. It's going to be hard for me to rationalize it, but it would be easier in a w- twisted kind of way. It, it, you better hope I got it if you want me to stay with you. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, and it, it sounds twisted, that's but that's just saying. real talk. And, 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 and the thing about you know. it, you know, depending on who the person is, he ain't going to be able to take it. 
He, he might he not. Gonna, he gonna end up. Somebody might die right then and there. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I've heard yeah. Of sadly, yeah. Yeah. sadly, I, I ain't trying to make yeah. fun. Of sadly, Carlton might be on to something there. We got a couple but of. We can be oh friends. We got a couple God, of. Uh, we got a couple of other hits here uh, in social media here. A, a real guy, Will, hey, is still with us. Um, HIV doesn't operate in a dormant state when contracted antibodies are formed and are present within six months of exposure now it's possible to contract it innocently through needle sticks transfusions etc testing can detect it within two weeks uh with hiv agrees with you calling if the infection cannot be explained through an accident herpes can lay dormant for years and become active so those are just his various uh his various comments um, but I mean, I, I, again, I know that what I just said may not be politically correct, but I'm not interested in being cl- politically correct. I'm interested in keeping it 100 because we call this show ain't no half stepping. And I would straight up be half stepping as the host if I sat here and said anything other than what I just said. You'd be like, bleep, bleep, <laughs> roadrunner. I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> and, you know, you know, Brandy is also saying that he got thro- uh, Michael Douglas. He's, so he's. She's piggybacking on what you said, um, the throat cancer from HPV, which causes cancer and is the reason we are vaccinating our young girls, not herpes or HIV. We talk about HPV, so mm-hmm. we got that one. You getting ready to say something, Diva? I was getting ready to say, um, let's assume you're already married. Let's say not engaged, but you're already married, um, and you find out, you know, let's say two years after you get married. You got married after one year, and two years later, it comes up. Is it a different situation it's, it's or is it the same for, situation? For me, it's a different situation because once you get married, it is a lot more involved in extricating yourself from another person. You know, you know, it, it, you can say what you want. I had this conversation with someone recently. You know, all of this engaged and all that kind of stuff, man. Whatever, it's your boyfriend, it's your girlfriend. Till you get married, I, I don't engage. Is just a fancy word for I'm going to marry you. Yep. It, it means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. So, ladies, if you engage and you've been engaged since Clinton was president, you probably should keep it moving because engagement I is crap. I, I don't, you know, I don't buy this engagement stuff. You well, know, especially that's your, that's if it's for boyfriend. years and years. That's your boyfriend. Hey, I can... if, if, if he proposed to you yesterday, he gave you a ring yesterday, and you rocking a ring at work today, showing all the girls and guys at work, he's still your boyfriend. No, he graduated to fiance. Okay, whatever. I, fiance. We ain't French in this country, fiance. so fiance means nothing fiance. to me. That's crazy. I, no, if you ain't got married, you know, because the real the reality is the only commitment that ma- that, that that counts is the commitment that you make some people place more you know you know credence in the commitment that you make before the great architect of the universe Mm -hmm. and some people put more in the commitment that you made for the judge you know that signed your life away great architect of the universe ain't gonna mess up your money but the judge might so think about your priorities when you get married and what way you trying to get out of it and if this is the case where we talking about you know i might get sick you know and i ain't sick right now Mm -hmm. You got a, you got something you might have to consider, especially if you're a young person and you're thinking about your future and the future of the your you know your 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 people that you may create your procreation, mm-hmm. you know. And the reality is, love ain't enough. Mm-hmm. You enter in a business contract with your spouse. Mm-hmm. That's why they make you sign a paper. Okay, so all of this, ah, uh, you should stay with them because you love them. That's crap. It just is. And I know people don't like hearing people say that. And I know Mrs. J is listening, and she's heard me say this before. She don't like when I say it. That's it's it's real talk. You don't get married by jumping a broom like they did in slavery days. You get married by getting a dude to come and say some nice stuff in front of other people, and they make you say nice stuff in front of other people. You got kissing in front of people, but you know what you do when you go in a little room outside that big room? You sign a paper. Mm-hmm. That's what makes you married. That makes it, that's what makes you married legally. Let me mm-hmm. rephrase that. You know, you could be you can be married to someone that you're not married to technically. Common if you law. if you if you mm-hmm. if you not even because that's another legality. If you join and, and just to kind of soften what I'm saying here, because I believe what I just said, but to 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 kind of add to it, you can join into a marriage with someone and not have that paper. If you feel that you're married inside your own heart, mm-hmm. that could be broken too. If she gonna make you sick though, that's just real talk. It's just real talk. And so, ladies, I talked enough. One of y'all go ahead and tell me how cold and crass and callous so I am. So we don't no. at all con- cons- If you think consort- I'm cold and crass, just tell me. Mm-mm, I don't. We don't at all consult to that grand architect in making that decision. You know what I mean? Like, 
especially in the marriage situation, God is supposed to be part of that union. And for you to just say, well, you know, this person is sick, drop them. Everybody don't believe in God. What's and everybody don't, everybody right. doesn't consult with deity and making decisions. Right. So, but I'm saying if you're married, just because you marry under God, yeah. then you believe in God. Some people just go ahead and say them words, man. I just real talk. Some people go ahead and just say them words. That's what gets them married. Just like signing the paper. It's just, I mean, we can sit here and we can play the game about how things are in a perfect world and euphoria and the rosy reds and all that. That's no. The reality is people go up there and they say the words because they gotta say the words. Yep. And they don't listen to them. They say the words because they gotta get through this so that they can be married. No one cares about the nine months. Just give me the baby. That's this is what we're dealing with here. So when we when we when we thinking about that kind of mentality with people, what becomes real talk is if you sick and I'm not sick, then we probably not gonna be together. It's just real talk. And I know people don't like to hear real talk. Well, you know what? I'm gonna make you uncomfortable when you listen to ain't no half stepping Marcus J. Because I ain't half stepping. I, I I'm not built that way. That's all right. That's just real talk. So. Anybody else got something they want to say on that one? No, I mean, sir. <laughs> nah, because I mean, if we can, if we can, if we can debate it. If y'all think that I'm a cold-hearted son of a gun, then tell me I'm a cold-hearted son of a gun, and we can talk about it. I just, no, I don't, not on this one. Everybody has their choices. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. My choice is if I'm sick, then we can be sick together. But if I ain't sick, then, man. <laughs> I don't know now. See, the, like I said, I don't know. And I don't know. Now, I mean, now the different, the different. Now, see, that's something like HIV. You know, the difference. The difference is now, if you get injured, or you, you know, because HIV has that stigmatism to it, right? But if you get injured, you in a bad car crash, or if you, you know, um, you know, get some sort of disease that you know isn't like. I mean, I'm having a hard time to kind of articulate what I'm thinking, but like, like if you like you have cancer or something yeah. like that, yeah, it can't be transmitted. You know, what I'm saying Maybe something that's not stick around. there's something that's not transmittable mm-hmm. absolutely changes my entire position on this. Mm-hmm. You know, it changes my position on oh, I wanted to have kids because that kind of goes out the window. Mm-hmm. There's something that's transmittable that at the end of the day, if I stay here, I could get sick. Hell no! But if you you know you develop some sort of cancer. Then yeah, I could see me staying there Why until we, we either get friends? you cured Why or you're not here no more. Be That's different. Now, for some friends? people, they will leave because of the burden of having to care for that sick person, even if you know they can't get cancer. I mean, the but, reality again, real talk once again. You know, I can't say that that would be me, but I can't say that I. I can 100% fault someone that may feel that way, especially if you're a young person. And you're a young person who is dealing with a situation where you know that there's nothing going to change. And I applaud anybody that can do it. I think that you should do it. But I can't look at somebody who doesn't do it, you know, and be like, ah, you're a terrible person, Mm -hmm. you know, because self-preservation is the first law of the land. And translated directly, that means you got to take care of you first. You know, how can I take care of you? I can't take care of me. Right. You know, and part of taking care of me is me being happy and me having sanity and me being able to do things that I wanted to do with my life. And because I have to take care of you forever, that's changed. I got a decision to make. You know, now for me, I would probably make that decision to take care of, you know, Mrs. J. Mm-hmm. You know, but she's not transmitting cancer to me. Mm-hmm. That's why this situation is a little bit different. Yeah, I wouldn't leave in situations like that. I wouldn't. Nah. I just, I couldn't. That would be even more cold-blooded than I was sounding yeah, earlier. Yeah, Like be. I said, I, my friend, she was diabetic. I was there for the longest time. Yeah, I mean, diabetes, man. People take for granted how serious diabetes ain't no joke. Mm-hmm. No joke. Depending on how bad it is, you mm-hmm. might lose your sight, your limbs, your foot, you know, your, your you know, your your, your kidneys start stop working on you. And it's yeah, like, yeah, man, the diabetes, man. The older we get, and the more information we get, the more we aware how cold blooded that disease really is. Mm-hmm. You know, ask type of Marcus Jack. But you got some more, Diva? What you yes, got I next? do. I have a whole book here, so <laughs> we, we we can stay here to tomorrow if you uh, like. Man, All you right. <laughs> All right, my next um, topic 
is a scenario question. You are in a marital bliss, just coming off of your honeymoon. Your new husband or wife all of a sudden becomes possessive and controlling, telling you what a good husband or wife must do. You had talked about marriage prior and saw eye to eye. This is a side of him or her you've never seen before. What do you do? So I'm going to ask you, Miss <laughs> Miss Cy Butler. I'm be like, are you crazy fool? <laughs> <laughs> crazy fool, huh? Like you better look, look again, look at who you talking to. He was just as sweet as he happen. could be before y'all got married, Mm-mm. and now he's telling you, you better get in that kitchen, you better cook him something to eat, mm-hmm. and you better clean that house when he get home. I sure will. I sure will. You may not like it after I finish cooking it, but I sure will. Sugar. Hmm, no. You know the reality. The reality to this question is there are mar- there are many people who get married who feel like they got baited and switched. Oh yeah, and that's just real talk. Yep. You know, there's people who saw certain things that led them to get married that when they start seeing the real person after the representative retires to the back room, they like, how the hell did I marry that person? Mm-hmm. That's just real talk, and so. The challenge now becomes one of two things. You either learn how to live with it while at the same time trying to, you know, massage them back to where you need them to be or you or you leave. Th- a, those are your options. There is no third option. That's a leave because you can't make them go to anything. Well, they already, well there's a third reason. option. There's a third option. Well, you that's could, the reason why divorce rate is so high. Yeah. What's the third, third option? option is putting something in his food. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> like with that brother. I mean, because see, the flip side of that I'm not is it ain't, it ain't in his food. the flip side of that is you know, ladies ain't the only one that feels some kind of way when it's over. So right. you know, I said you can put some in. The, I mean, you can put some in his food, but you know, he could just as easily do something that's not politically correct mm-hmm. to you. You know, right. I'm not gonna let out the secret, so I ain't gonna say you know mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, but seriously, I mean, no, it I'm happens. just gonna exit. I'll exit. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it also depends on you know how quickly this evolution takes, takes place. place. <laughs> you know, I mean, if it's something that you know by definition of the word evolution took time to get to that point, you may not have even seen it coming. Right. You may you may one day wake up and say, "Who the hell are you?" Right. Now, did you go ahead in the beginning and start acting like little Mary Housemaker? Mm -hmm. And now the man's used to it, and that's what he likes, and that's what he wants. You put yourself in this situation. Right. But if you don't, if you're not who you are from the very beginning, Mm -hmm. you know, then that's your fault. Right. Well, uh, again, I know, you know, I've heard it said, you know, and I've seen examples of people relaxing when they get to a certain level whether that level is marriage you know whether that level is uh engagement (laughs) i'm taking a shot at myself from earlier part of the conversation but really some people feel like they've gotten to the level that they want to be at and they relax Mm -hmm. and i don't think you should ever relax i think we all we all those of us in long-term relationships are all guilty of it we are all guilty of letting your foot off the gas Mm -hmm. from time to time but if you completely stop the car it's a problem right you it's a problem and you're going to have someone that's going to be resentful and disillusioned on your hands and you Mm -hmm. need to restart that car because if you don't you might find your ass by yourself like you said that's Mm -hmm. why if you one of those people in this analogy but i do think that the amount of time that has passed diva will certainly affect well that's why i just said that she Mm -hmm. would do and i and i don't want to speak for you but my guess is if it's something that evolved over time, it would be a lot more difficult to just bounce than it would be that you just the way the question was presented. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing was you just came off your honeymoon and they tripping. So that, right. that's a little bit different. That ain't even a divorce. That's an annulment. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's this real quick, Judge. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to ask Mr. Carlton Banks his take on this question, this scenario. She got to go. I mean, you know, you wake up, who are you? you? I mean, for real, you get, get a real quick... Um, Amnesia uh, What happened And what you were like Beforehand You got to go If you start acting crazy I got, I can't help that You got to go I think when we say that though It's so much easier To say than actually do it Yeah it, mm-hmm. it really is It's so much easier To say it Than actually do it I mean You got people That can't break up With a boyfriend You gonna tell me That you gonna divorce somebody I'll probably be in the house Going mm-hmm. I mean that's just I mean you you, you you know You know People once they attach to people 
You know, them pheromones are strong, man. And once you attach to some, it's hard to extricate yourself from them. And you talking about divorcing them? Come on, man. Seriously? That's crazy. And you just came off your honeymoon. You spent all that money on that wedding and everything. And yeah, you just going to quit them I, off the I, dime. I told, I told I mean, the missus that this is a two-income <laughs> family when she got married. So before she got married. So don't think you're going to sit in the house and just sit in the house and do housework. No, that's a two-income family. I need mean, you to go to work. I mean, there's certain no, things that, the you know, there's certain you. things that, you know, chivalry shouldn't affect. You know, but the times that we live in, if you are able to 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 have both people work, then great. You know, if it's Definitely a necessary thing, then you're absolutely great. Mm -hmm. But if you are able for one person to stay home, regardless of the gender, because, I mean, if a dude is staying home and he's taking care of the house, then, you know, I don't feel some kind of way about his masculinity. He might. I don't. No. You know, some cats trip off their lady making more than them. To me, mm -hmm. I think you need to grow a pair if that's if you're that guy. But you know, and that's me again on the soapbox. We're getting a hit on the mixed out page from Simone, alluding to the last piece of the diva diaries that we talked about a few minutes ago. She said people walk out of relationships because of infertility, a disease that may kill you, is a no brainer. So I get, I think she's uh, agreeing with Carlton and me on that one, diva. Okay. I appreciate the feedback, by the way, yes. on MixLR. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, do we have any more? Let's keep going. Okay. Well, I wanted to do your question. Absolutely. Would you like me to do it now or uh, sure. throw something else in there? No, first? let's do that one now. Okay. In case to see how, I mean, we I got, loved we got your time. question. You, you had, well, this topic you had on the blog on Facebook. Right. The Love Revolution blog. You guys check it out on Facebook. Definitely check it out. And... His question, his topic was, what makes a man a man and a woman a woman? Now, I got that question from another show that I listened to uh, and just kind of listening to what people's responses were. It was presented very vague, just like the diva mm -hmm. just set it up. It's presented in a vague way on, a, on, on, purpose, on purpose for a reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's let's round table the, the diva and I will go last on this one I'm going to start with S.Y. here oh great pick on the new girl absolutely <laughs> we're going to pick on the new official co-host that ain't no high stepping with Marcus go ahead Stepp. girl yeah I'm going to keep saying that. I like how that sounds too what am I what's, what's the like official the new official the official co-host co of ain't no high stepping with Marcus oh, kind of wow. like but here's the thing though right diva I, 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 I got to like tell that. her I got to tell it though, right? Kind of like when you go to somebody's house and the first time you go to their house, they're all nice to you and you, you know, you say, would you like something to drink? And you go and get them a drink and all of that stuff. And then the second time they come over, it's like, go and get your ass a drink. <laughs> I'm not your mate. You ain't your mate. What you asking me for? Go I actually do that. Yeah. So, so, so next week, all of me being nice though, I don't know. I might have to treat you like you I treat Carl. Nice to me no matter what. You know what you I need to do now? I don't know why you treat now? me right now. Can you pay the AC bill up in this piece? Yeah. I mean, we got a fan I, over there. You got to tell the it's listeners it's a hot in here. This, they don't care. They want to listen to us talk. Well, turn the fan on, man. Just fan sitting right there. You, right you fussing at me. Anytime else. Anyway. I mean, goodness, man. Always bringing up stuff. Ain't you got know what you need to do now, Miss Sai? You need to come up with a cat call like Miss Lissa P. It's the top button, man. Don't you know how to turn the fan on? I don't know. I, one, I, you know how I she has. I think that's her thing. thing. You got to come up with your own, though. You got to come up with your own cat call. I don't know about that one. So anyway, <laughs> you ain't off the hook. I see you over there brainstorming your answer. You gonna answer? I really question. don't know. I'm not sure if it was what makes a man a man or a woman a woman. I just honestly think that you should be true to yourself no matter what. You should be who you are. No matter what, man or woman, if you have self-love, self-worth, whatever it is that you want to call it, and you put that out, then that's you. That's what's, that what's, that's what makes you 100%, no matter what. I don't think it's just man or woman. I just think it's individual. Uh, Mr. Carlton Banks. It, it all depends on the person. I mean, that's a question that if you ask a heterosexual man, is he a man? And then you ask a homosexual man, is he a man? He's going. Both of them are going to say, yes, I'm a man. But if you ask a, hetero, homosexual, a heterosexual man, is a homosexual man a man? He's going to say, he may say no. Mm -hmm. it all, it's all in the per person's perception and how they handle themselves and what they want to do and what they carry themselves about. So I can't really... And truly answer your question directly without saying it depends on the person. Right. 
Well, since this is the diva segment and the uh, the host always goes last, I'll go ahead and go now and let the diva speak after me. Okay. Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, it's vague. Your question is asked in a vague way, which doesn't really allow for uh, a whole lot of explanation because you're not given a whole lot to go by. Mm -hmm. And when I heard this question asked on another show, you know, the first set of com uh, the first set of comments were just like the vague comments that the two of them just gave, which is fair because you don't know really what the the, the person asking a question is looking for. Like, what are you looking for? Are you looking to get from me? You know what I'm saying? Are we looking at you know stereotypically defined gender roles here? Are we looking at uh, physical roles here? You know, when you say what makes a man a man, well, I would say that. Uh, 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 a tall, dark, and handsome guy would say, a tall, dark, and handsome guy makes me a man. You know, my muscles makes me a man. A pretty woman would say, her pretty face makes her a woman. The way she, you know, is feminine with the sway of her hips and, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I don't necessarily want to take it there. I think what makes a man is someone who understands the fact that your job is to be a provider. Straight up. That's first and foremost. It's your job to lead your family. It's your job to be the point person in your family. It's your job to be the captain of your family. Now, when you look around a baseball team, everybody's wearing the same uniform. Just because you're the captain, you're not singled out on the field as the captain because you're 18. But at the end of the day, someone has to be the one out front. That's what makes a man a man. You need to be able to protect your woman. You need to be able to protect your children. You need to be able to provide for your women and your children. And you need to be the one who, if something goes down, you need to have a plan. Straight up. Now, your woman can do all of those things. But you need to be able to do those things. You need to do those things. You're the man. You need to be a man. And I think as a woman, I think it's more for you guys to answer that question. But I'll kind of offer what my two cents is. You know, I think a woman needs to be able to do all that kind of stuff. But I think her primary role is to be the support. Mm -hmm. And to support the man in those endeavors. And, and, and demand that he supports her as well in her endeavors. But when we're talking about building a family and building a home, I think that's where a woman's primary position is, building the family and helping them and support the man to do that. Not necessarily politically correct. I did tell some folks that we would ask this question and my response would come off somewhat chauvinistic, but you feel how you feel. A little off to the left with this. Okay. For you. Okay. How heavy are those responsibilities? Well, it depends. It depends on the dynamic of the couple. Because you might have a situation where I'll give you guys my I'll give you my I'll give you my situation as an example. And I generally don't get into my personal situation on the show, but I will to make this point. I'm not good at building stuff. I'm just not. Mrs. J is very good at building stuff. So if we got a bookcase that needs to get built, she's gonna Go build ahead, it. Girl. She's going to build it, you know, but if the alarm goes off in the house, she's so scattered. She don't know what the hell to do. She's losing her mind. She's tripping. Whereas I'm the one that's standing there calm going, it's the alarm. All we got to do is turn it off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she forgets the code and everything. Huh? She I don't know the code. I don't, oh, okay. She don't know the code. <laughs> that ain't good. Mr. That's Jackson, not good if he's not at home. If you know, if you know the code good. right now, text it to me. And I won't read it on the air, but at least then I will know. <laughs> I, can <tell> them, <laughs> I can tell them that that you know the code if you're listening to us right now, which you better be. But I would think that's so heavy to know that you have all those responsibilities. But that's part of being a man, and that's I part. Of, that's part of that's that's part of what you're trained. If you're properly trained, like I was, like mm -hmm. Pops Jay trained me mm -hmm. and Big Brother Jay, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not just speaking of me, you know, because there's plenty of people who didn't have their version of Pops Jay mm -hmm. who came out just fine. So I'm not saying that you had to have that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that is what I believe. Well, I don't like to use the word belief. That is what I know uh, happens. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a heavy burden. Mm -hmm. There's some days that, you know, you, you, you have a tough time at it. But the reality is... Just because it's tough don't mean that you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because you got people that's counting on you. Mm -hmm. And if people count on you outside the house, you do realize that that's secondary. But you're real good at taking care of business at work, right? Mm -hmm. You're at the top of your business and you're the top of your job at work. So don't be trying to think that you can't lead your household like you lead your office mm -hmm. at work. Because your primary goal as the man 
is to raise your family and protect your woman. So if you can't do that, then, I mean, really? That's why I trip off some of these cats that's fighting with the baby mama. Like, really? It's your job, oh. to, it's your job to fight. You know, it's, it's not your job to fight with her. It's your job to, 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 to support her. And it's her job to support you. And I'm seeing him looking to see. Uh, Mrs. J just texted me. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, look, hey, look, I don't get in trouble. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I know you don't. Okay, right, let's be clear on that. Yeah, she, yeah, I don't get in trouble. But she does know the code because yeah, she just girl. texted to me. Okay, there cool. you go. I ain't never, ever in all the years we lived in this house, and Carl Banks has been there. I ain't never seen her walk to that keypad <laughs> ever. Cause you're walking into the. Keypad. I don't use keypad. I know the code, <laughs> but I don't use keypad. I use the remote, which is what I've always seen. I've always seen her use the remote, <laughs> the remote. <laughs> so I just assume she ain't know the code. But she just, oh, she, she just, she just Good. made a liar out of the host, which I'm glad. I, I'm no, glad. she didn't make a liar. You said you asked her if she knew it. Yeah, she knows. She, she, call, she, she didn't say she nothing knew. else. She just texts the numbers as if to say, "Fool, I know the number." <laughs> No, I think I think there's a middle. I yeah, think there was a middle finger. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, every once in a while, every once in a while, I'll call her out, and she'll make sure that she lets me know. Look, fool, I'm listening. So, mm-hmm. like a couple of weeks ago, I was talking some trash, and uh, you know, she said, "Bump you." And whatnot, which is translation for mm-hmm. you know f you. So mm-hmm. yeah, so it's cool. It's a lot of the f word being flown around at the J House. But anyway. Um, you, rarely do I lose my train of thought, but I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. You got a text back. I, I, I have no up, idea where, where I was trying to transition to, but I think I was, I was, I was on my, I was on my chauvinistic san, uh, soapbox. That's where I was, and you know, I know that it's not politically correct to say some of the things that I was saying a minute ago, but it's how I feel, and I'm not one that's going to run for how I feel. If someone has a problem mm-hmm. with it, we can debate it. If they don't have nothing to say, then I can't. I can't engage with someone who feels some kind of way about how I feel, but they don't tell me. That's just right. one of the things we like about you. What? What's that? That's just that you're so real. Speak openly. And you, yeah, yeah, you well, say what I you mean, have to say. Like, if you did otherwise, you I get that. I get that. I get that from Pops J, man. I get that from Pops J. He he he, he is absolutely that's that's my idol right there. That dude like he the got a cape. Title. Yeah, he got a he got a cape. You he know, just don't know. wear it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're like a superhero. <laughs> And whatnot to me, so but yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely get that from him. So, you know, how stepping with Marcus J. Anybody else want to get into the what makes a man a man and woman a woman, Diva? Well, I just wanted to say I agree with you wholeheartedly in what you said about the roles and things like that. I think that's how it should be. I'm not in a chauvinistic, disrespectful way. I think a lot of times people take that type of setup as the woman's underneath the guy. And I don't look at it that way. I look at it as we're partners together. You know, he may be considered the leader, but he wouldn't be a leader without me being there. You know, it's kind of like a king-queen situation. Yep, I so I agree with you on that. And then um, I also wanted to piggyback or mention what you said earlier about it being a pressure for the guy. It's also a pressure for women, especially nowadays, where we're so so-called independent and we're doing all these masculine type of things, but we're expected to be still feminine and ladylike and, you know, pretty and all that kind of stuff, too. Uh, I don't mind so it, it, grass. It's, still, it's still a pressure on the women just as much as the men to fall into those roles. I can dig it. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. We're going to take a quick break, y'all. When we come back, we got a couple more topics. From the dating pool diva, Marcus J. Ain't no half step. And I got Carl Banks, the newest co host of Ain't No Half Step with Marcus <laughs> J. S. Y. Butler, the dating pool diva, in the building with me. We got little Jimi Hendrix. You can't have no rock music without that guy right there. Stay with us. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you.